contest is going to be a great test for I me. Mean, you know, coming off uh, the other night, great confidence builder against Willamette. They had a great team performance. Alcorn State is very athletic, fast-paced team that is going to push the tempo. They're going to trap. They're going to try to make things happen. Portland needs to have a great team effort tonight to pull out for the victory. For Alcorn State, the Braves are long and athletic, and tonight they'll rely on Vanell Henry to lead them. Yeah, he's their leading scorer on the season with 11 points a game, shooting about 53% from the field. Makes a lot happen on the offense and defensive end. Portland needs to locate him early and not let him get going. Meanwhile, Chris Austin is a human bucket, and he's done a great job in his short time on the floor for the Pilots. Yeah, dynamic guard who can do it all. Explosive, can shoot the three, get to the rim. He can defend all spots. Super strong, and the Pilots need him to do this all season long. We're about ready for tip. And here it goes. Alcorn State wins the opening tip. Well, and one thing that you're going to see from Alcorn State is full court pressure of some point or some sort every single time up and down the floor, and that's going to be an emphasis with making sure that Portland doesn't turn the ball over. Justin Thomas up and in. Justin Thomas. And a Braves player is down on the court right now. And that's DJ McCorder. Starters out there for the Pilots. Moses Wood, Tyler Robertson, Chris Austin, Vasile Vucinich, and Mike Meadows. Alcorn State. McCorder. Byron Joshua, Justin Thomas, Darius Agnew, and D.K. Thorne. Right now the Braves off to an early 4-0 lead. Robertson puts it up with six on the shot clock and doesn't get the friendly bounce. Feed inside. Henry's got it. Near the baseline, gives it up as he was falling away. Floater no good, Vucinic. Vucinic, top of the key, gives it up to Moses Wood. And that's one thing that they're going to see all night is traps and right there getting stuck in the corner. Portland's got to do a better job of controlling the ball. Austin putting up the three. And the first shot falls for the Pilots. Well, you can see the pressure and the intensity level compared to the other night is, is pretty high. Portland's doing a nice job. They just got to make sure they settle down, get in the half court, and get good shots. Joshua picked up his dribble. Henry's got it near the block, kicks it back out to Byron Joshua, and he hits the triple. You know, Alcorn State struggled shooting the three in their first two games this season against Washington State and then against Seattle U. And that's probably part of their offense they're going to like to get going against the Pilots tonight. Well, and that was all set up by our guard really doubling down in the post area, which, you know, right now they have a little bit more size down low than we do. 
guard doubles down and they just kicked it out. And, you know, the other night against Seattle U, I think they were scoreless for the first six minutes, just couldn't shoot the basketball. And Portland's got to make sure that they uh, do a great job of closing out, making sure they do something else. Peju checks in for Alcorn State. And, and we talked about them being long and athletic, and that's going to be what could be a problem, I should say, against the Portland Pilots. They haven't necessarily faced a team that's adding this much pressure to them. Well, and Coach Leggins talked about decision-making and turning the basketball over, and that's where this kind of pressure can really cause trouble for people. No look past the Meadows. That one's long. Not a bad look for him. I mean, he had a great night the other night. You know, first triple-double. He can shoot that shot. Just got to maybe settle down a little bit. And yeah, you mentioned that triple-double. 15 points, 11 assists, and 10 rebounds. The first one in program history. Henry has it just inside the three-point line. Going up against the freshman Vucinic. Battling down low. And off the glass, no good. The rebound. Looks like it went off of Mike Meadows and out of bounds. It'll stay with the Braves. Well, and that's the matchup that I'm really interested in. I mean, down low, we've got to do a good job of either sending somebody like we did on that last play um, and helping him out because he's very athletic. Meadows coming up and breaks up the pass. Turnover. Austin steps into the three. Rims out. Great anticipation by Meadows. Good shot in transition. Pilots trailing by four. Just over three minutes into tonight's contest. Leggins with the energy on the bench. Under 10 on the shot clock. The drive underneath, no good. And a foul called on the floor. Mike Meadows picking up the foul. That's his first and the team's first. Well, I think Coach Leggins wanted them into something different defensively. A little miscommunication. Pilots try to trap in the corner. Meadows comes over. Henry with it now. The pass to Agnew broken up, out of bounds. And that'll be a turnover. Little 2-2-1, two, two, trying to put pressure in traps. Good job by the Pilots, just got to settle it in half court. Robertson got some separation, and off the mark. Almost a travel right there by Justin Thomas. Lefty pulls up over Robertson, no good. Moses Wood skies for the rebound. And that's what they need. They need everybody on the boards tonight. Moses Wood with it. Vucinic falling away, turns it over. Justin Thomas going up, got the separation. And missed Good it defense. offensive board. Good defense, just walled him up, made him, you know, off balance, great job. Pilots right now have not scored in almost three minutes. Very physical inside, very athletic, fast paced like we talked about. Thorne with it, five on the shot clock, gives it up to Linnell Henry, back iron. Pilots wearing their great uniforms, the pilot wheel on the chest. Out to Moses Wood, the wing three, halfway down and out. Well, they've had some good attempts offensively, just haven't, haven't fallen for them. One thing I'd like to see them do is crash the offensive glass. If we're not shooting the ball, you know, at a high, had a high clip there, you got to do something else. Foul call. In the paint, we'll see who it's on. It'll be on Moses Wood. That'll be his first personal in the oh, second yeah, one, one on the Pilots, and that'll send us to a media break. 7-3, Alcorn State leading the Pilots. 14.54 to go until halftime. We'll be right back on the WCC Network.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Game has resumed, 14-46 on the clock. Pilots leading 7-3, missing another offensive opportunity. And right now, I mean, the thing that's uh, evident is every shot that Portland's taken, five out of their first attempts from the three-point line, shooting 18%. Pilots swing it around the outside. Moses Wood, another opportunity, and unable to connect. Braves push it up. Agnew underneath, can't get it to go. Four pilots are there, and they're gonna say it's off of Agnew. It'll be pilot basketball. Well, good job there of getting back in transition. Right now, they're um, getting out rebounded seven to three, and that's gonna be a point of emphasis that we talked about in the, in the open. Gotta do a good job offensively and defensively on the boards, but they've gotta settle down offensively and get some quality shots. Now they're dealing with some full court pressure. A little 2-1-2. Two, two. Birdie seen it once before. Meadows out to Chris Austin. Chica and Duca in the game. He's fighting for position on the block. Pilots around the outside. Wood drives baseline oh. and denied by Linnell Henry. Well, there looked like quite a bit of body on the penetration, to be honest with you. Great block by Henry, but and we got a travel call on DJ McCorder. Moses Wood checking out Tyler Robinson in for the pilots. And you and I have talked about Tyler Robinson uh, multiple times this season. We're happy that he's finally making his debut after not playing at Arizona State or against Will Emmett on Thursday. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just adds leadership, strength. He can defend all spots, um, high IQ, and just a competitor. No team has scored in, in either four, in about four and a half minutes. Perry had 12 points against Will Emmett. He can shoot the three, gives it up to Robertson, the pass at his feet. Well, you can see the pressure just kind of throwing Portland out of sorts offensively. Got to get themselves settled in the half court. They're swinging the ball, they're just not getting too many opportunities and they're settling for threes. DJ Bruton picked up the foul. That's his first, the second on the Braves. And you have to give it up to Alcorn State. They have not made it easy for the Pilots to get their offense going. Chris Austin off the mark, and Duca, the rebound. He had himself a double-double against Willamette. Almost had another offensive board on the same possession. And the Pilots 0 for their last nine. Well, both teams struggling to score, as you mentioned. Just the intensity level and the pressure on both sides is, has been really good. Alcorn State, four turnovers in the last five minutes. They're one of their last eight shooting. Henry going up against Robertson on the baseline. Good defense of just holding his ground. Pass to Nduka. Can't bring it in at first. Great feed from Chris Austin. The freshman can't finish. Offensive rebound, and he lost it. Nice look inside, un, you know, just unfortunate, able to, unable to finish there. Tip ball off of the Braves. Pilot basketball. Substitution for Alcorn State. I mean, the athleticism from Alcorn State is obviously very evident. They can get up and down the floor. They got height. They can get off the ground. Portland has got to do a good job of keeping people in front and then bodying up inside. And they got to put a body on the rebound. Got to block somebody out. Well, there is Crunchy Marshall checking in. Well, now Henry heads to the bench. Pilots are shooting just one at 12 to start the game. Good ball movement from Portland. Vucinic down the low. And that's the best half court set they've run so far in the ball game. Just a little bit of patience, ball swing, went inside out, good execution. That ends nearly a six and a half minute scoring drought for Portland. So now under 12. Keandre Montgomery. 
Gives it up. Bruton puts it up. No good. Foul called. Foul called on number 21, Ladarius Marshall. That'll be his first. And the third team foul on the Braves, and that'll bring us to a timeout on the floor. Seven to five, we've got a close one going inside the Child Center. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. The pilots. Welcome back inside the Child Center. Brian Slyke and Jennifer Mountain with your call. Right now the Pilots trailing by two. Almost halfway through the first half to Alcorn State. And both teams really struggling to score the basketball right now. Shooting under 20%. Lucinic almost lost it in the paint. Now he sets the screen for Perry. To Mike Meadows. There's seven on the shot clock. Another screen. Meadows got a mismatch he liked. The step back three, that one's short. He thought it got tipped, but it'll be a shot clock violation. I'd like to see him, you know, look to take that guy off the bounce with a short shot clock like that, make something happen. Pilots just two for 13 out of the break. And after what we saw on Thursday when they put up 122 points, you know they can put it in the basket. They just haven't had these great opportunities or they forced a few shots. For sure, and, and definitely playing against a different athlete tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's complete athleticism in every single spot that they've got to defend. Corner three for Montgomery. The transfer from Mississippi State can't hit. And Marco Morency almost picked the pocket of Chris Austin. Moses Wood will check in. Austin to the bench. Well, the one thing, you know, against Elkhorn State, you can't pause or slow down for a second because they're coming with hands and trying to make something happen, whether it's individually or a trap. That's their MO. That's what they go to. And uh, Coach Lagans told, you know, talked to us about the other day. They've got to be prepared for it. Yaru Harvey into the game now. You have to think if that was a cleaner pass out to Moses Wood on the wing, he probably would have put it up. Swing it around, Vucinic now on the block. Five on the shot clock. Pilots looking for an opening to put one up. And Moses Wood able to make contact with the rim, but no good. Well, good defense by Alcorn State. I mean, both last two possessions, you know, it's winding down on the shot clock, making it really hard for Portland to score. Well, Portland's defense is holding tough themselves. No points for Alcorn State in eight and a half minutes. 
And McCorder will end that drought with a shot over Robertson. Leggins wants his players to pick up the pace. Now the offense moving around, Vucinic. Foul call before the shot. That foul will go on number 12, D.K. Thorne. Too much body down low. Correction, that was Ladarius Marshall picking up the foul. That'll be his second personal. Not quite sure what's happening out on the floor right now. Nice. Beautiful play to get the shot opportunity, but too strong off the glass. Yeah, just unfortunate. Great execution and then just missed the bunny. Robinson would like to have that one back for sure. Portland, one of their last 14. Alcorn State, one of their last 11. And Montgomery missing his second three. Arby pushing tempo going up the court. Gets it to Perry in the corner. One extra pass to Robertson. Bang! Great extra pass, and that's what he's really good at. Set, getting his feet set and pulling the trigger. Portland really needed that. Get a little momentum going, because really defensively they've done a nice job. It's just about scoring the ball. Now the Pilots trailing only by one. Nine to eight. Linnell Henry trying to go up against the freshman. In and out. Lucinic rips down the rebound. Robertson with the hesitation, and we got a push call. And it's gonna be on number 15, DJ Bruton. Bruton will pick up his second personal and the fourth one on Alcorn State. A lot of contact there, just trying to get down the floor. Justin Thomas, Byron Joshua, and Darius Agnew all checking in for the Braves. Eight oh nine left to go until halftime. This should be a good test for both teams and where they rank in the Ken Palm rankings. They do have a common opponent with the exhibition, or I should say the scrimmage for Portland against Seattle U. Alcorn State just played Seattle U on Wednesday and lost that one on a buzzer beater three-pointer. Yeah, similar situation. They struggled to score, especially early in that game, and did not shoot a high percentage. And it looks like this foul will be on Tyler Robertson. It will be. That'll be his first personal, and the third one on the Pilots. That'll send us to Amedia. Pilots still trailing by one, 9-8 to eight to Alcorn State inside the Child Center. We'll be right back on the WCC Network.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Nine to eight Alcorn State leads. At the free throw line is Darius Agnew. Grad transfer from Southeast Missouri State. 52.5% free throw shooter. Makes the first one. Brian Slack and Jennifer Mountain with your call. It has not been a clean first half, to say the least, for Portland. But something that uh, has really stuck out to you so far, Jennifer? Well, really, it's just in the half court offense right now. I mean, they're shooting 17% from the floor. You know, getting some decent looks at it, but I just think they're a little bit out of tempo with what they want to do. Here you see the pressure, 2-1-2 two, two, coming to them, you know, half court press. And the active hands of Justin Thomas force a turnover. I mean, both teams are really struggling to shoot the basketball. Yeah, Alcorn State just three of 15. Meanwhile, the Pilots three of 18. Both teams have three field goals in the half. And Alcorn State's uh, leading on the rebound 15 to 11. As Matthias Zoe in the game there. Going Good up hands. against Darius Agnew, poked away by Perry. It'll stay with the Braves. Good hands by Perry right there, going down, double down a little bit, help out the post player. Robertson will head to the bench. Chris Austin back out on the floor. He's our player to watch. 22 against Arizona State. Montgomery trying to beat the shot clock. Offensive rebound for the Braves. And Chris Austin has the ability to score, and I'm sure Coach Leggins talked to him about, hey, get these guys going a little bit and spark them. Byron Joshua, a freshman from New Orleans with it. Agnew going up against the freshman Harvey. And the shot clock violation. The Pilots defense coming up big, forcing that turnover. Good defense. I mean, they've had collective effort defensively all game, doubling down a little bit, making things happen. Obviously, they're not shooting the ball well. Again, a little 2-2-1, two, two, half-court press, little trap here and there. Austin almost got double teamed. Now the Pilots are moving the ball around. Wood almost had it poked away from behind, got the friendly roll. Smart decision, took the three-point line away from him, and he could shoot it for sure. Uh, the nice little floater and mid-range game. They're gonna need that. Moses Wood had a double-double against Willamette, 16 points and 15 rebounds. Pilots back down, trailing by one. Well, Henry, the three dead ahead, gets his own offensive rebound, following Ooh. it. Oh, and it lands on a fan that goes courtside, and they take a tumble. And that man's already got a broken foot. <laughs> of all the guys in the gym, <laughs> he's got a cast on his leg, for Pete's sakes. He's having a laugh about it. Moses Wood will check it in. So under six minutes to go, Pilots trailing by one. Little full court pressure, 2-2-1. Two, two, Great job of handling. And the block from Linnell Henry. Chris Austin got it back and fighting down low. Gets Great. the basket to fall. Great job of just falling a shot, staying strong. And that's one of the advantages. He's, he's just got a strong athletic body. Good effort. The Pilots working with their first lead. Joshua over Wood, high off the glass, no good. Kept alive by the Braves, now Perry with it. Pilots pushing it up, they've got numbers. Fade away from Austin, front iron, and Zoe with the rebound. The lane opened up for Austin. Great body control and the finish and one. I'll tell you, he's so explosive to the rim. And again, body control. And we've got a player really hurt on the floor here. And that's number three. That's Justin Thomas. Grad transfer from Moorhead State. Also went to Northern Illinois. And they're going to send the players to the bench while they take a look at him. And I think it's best we probably take a break as well. We'll be right back inside the Child Center. 5.01 left to go until halftime. It's a three-point lead for the Pilots.
We welcome you back inside the Child Center as Justin Thomas got up on his own power and being looked at behind the bench right now. Well, and I think the officials are actually looking at the drive with Austin. I think he hit him in his in the head. I don't know if it was obviously, I don't think intentional by any means, but anything above the, the shoulders these days is a point of emphasis. So I think they're taking a look to see if he actually did extend his arm. Now, I didn't see who they had called the foul on, but if it was on Justin Thomas and then they go back and look at this for Chris Austin, how does that affect does he get a free throw? Does he not get a free throw in that aspect? He still gets the free throw. And the refs now at center court discussing the last play. Well, one thing that we can talk about real quick is the last maybe three minutes, Portland's done a much better job in the half court of getting some better shots. They've taken the ball to the rim you know, instead of settling for the three, which I think is a huge key, and all of a sudden they have a three-point lead. And I don't think they're gonna call anything on Austin. No, I mean, he was protecting the ball, and, and I think that uh, he was in, you know, inadvertent contact. Crunchy Marshall just checked into the game. He's got two fouls for the Braves. Chris Austin, 81.1% free throw shooter at Fordham. And that one spins out. Well, he's come in and given the spark that they need by getting to the rim and making things happen. And they need him on day in and day out to score the basketball, and he's very capable. Joshua gets around Meadows. Ran into some defensive trouble. Perry cuts off his man, Paul King. Crunchy Marshall, nothing but net. Perry setting up the offense. Silvera comes up for the screen, gives it to Meadows. Zoe fighting for position underneath. Foul called before the shot. Good job by Zoe of maintaining contact down low and getting great position. Crunchy Marshall, his third personal, 17 fouls on the Braves. Right now it's a one point lead for Portland, under five minutes to go, and it'll be a one and one for Silvera. Very sad in the lineup for Alcorn State. But there was Silvera at the line to shoot Silvera, 64.5% when he was at Austin P from the free throw line. That's where he started his college career, the first free throw, smooth. And through for one. Well, you like it when your big man can shoot free throws for sure. And he's come in and, and given them some good minutes defensively and, you know, just working down low and got himself to the free throw line just by getting position. Makes both free throws on that one. And now he'll find himself on the bench as Tyler Robertson checks in for him. And that's all you can really ask for. Get some production out of your big man. Now give him a breather. 16-13. Alcorn State just one of their last 15 from the floor. Well, Portland's done a nice job of switching things up. Foul called in the paint on Moses Wood. Portland foul on number one, Moses Wood. His second, second personal, personal foul. And sometimes that can happen on a switch is all of a sudden you get caught down low or caught behind somebody, got a little bit too much body and got caught. No look pass into the corner. Shot no good. Good job of blocking out. Great job by Jack Perry. Pilots looking for their first win against the Division I opponent. Meanwhile, Alcorn State only in their third game of a 16-game road trip to start the season. Robertson got the ball, cross court to Meadows. The extra pass to Perry, top of the key. No good, back iron. And Darius Agnew went up for the rebound. 
Well, that's unfortunate. Great ball swings. Way to share the basketball. Got a great look. Just didn't drop. And Tyler Robertson will pick up that foul. That'll be his second personal, the fifth one on the Pilots. And that'll send us to another media break. 16 to 13 Pilots working with a three-point lead with under four left to go until halftime on the WCC Network. Out of the media break, it's a three-point lead for Portland. Brian Slag, Jennifer Mountain with your call. Chica and Duca checks into the game for the Pilots. The rest of them on the floor, it's Perry, Austin, Meadows, and Robertson. Well, he's gone to a little bit smaller lineup, probably looking to spread the floor on the other end here. And Chica's just done a nice job all year of being athletic and making plays. So I like that substitution. I was going to say, he just used his body there to affect that shot. And then he came down with the rebound. Coach Legend referred to him or referenced him to Draymond Green, and man, I agree. And that's high praise coming from your coach. Heck yeah. Austin refusing the screen. Five on the shot clock. Meadows goes baseline, kicks it out to Chris Austin. Got left alone, and that's dangerous. And I like that offensive possession. I mean, a lot of people touched the basketball inside out, penetration, and they were patient and didn't panic. No scoring for Alcorn State in the last two minutes and 15 seconds. Denied by Mike Meadows. Little three on two here. Oh, the footwork from Mr. Austin. Nice little Euro step and finish, and I'll tell you, ever since he's come in the ball game, great things have happened on the offensive end. I was gonna say that the momentum for the Pilots, everything just sort of changed. That's a timeout called by Alcorn State. And it'll be a 30 second break, so we'll keep it here. 2.14 left to go in the first half. Well, it started off defensively. Great block by Meadows, and then transition game three on two, kept it himself. And Nice little finish. He, he just is so strong and smooth around the rim and can score in a variety of ways. Hits a three in the previous possession. And you're right, he's able just to use his body and he's so strong and able to control himself. Well, and this has been kind of the Achilles heel for Alcorn State as they've gone so many in the games I've seen or you know had you know chances to watch. It's just minutes and six minutes the other night in the beginning of the game at Seattle U couldn't score the basketball. 13 points in in the half so far, and I mean neither team don't take don't take this wrong. Neither team has shot the ball that well, but Portland in the last few minutes is really starting to get it going offensively. I believe they were two for 20, or close to it. Now they've got eight made baskets for the Pilots. They're on a 7-0 run over the last two and a half minutes. 
Two minutes to go until halftime. And Duca on the shot and a foul called. And that one will be called on number one, DJ McCorder. And that'll send the Pilots to the line with a one and one opportunity. McCorder's first personal foul. The, the eighth on the Braves. Meadows now at the line. Meadows shot 88.9% from the free throw line at Eastern Washington last season. When we talked about his triple double the other night, and I mean, he, he really contributed in all kinds of areas and uh, just a great performance. And he, j he never even made it about himself, which not that he should, but he just talked and praised about his teammates and how involved everybody is. And, and that goes such a long way in building culture for this team, especially in Shantae's first season here on the block. Well, and we're gonna be talking about this all year long and the fact that these guys are bought in, they really like each other, they're just learning to play with each other. They've only had a few months together and a lot of potential. Henry in trouble on the block, picked up his dribble and Duca and Vucinic there, and Montgomery comes in and lays it in. Great double team, just unfortunate. Lost that cutter in the, in the process. Joshua cuts off Chris Austin. And Austin takes it himself, comes up short. That was a good take. You're not going to see him miss too many of those. And a charge call. Tyler Robertson receives that one. And I'll tell you, that's what he does. He's got such a high basketball IQ, so smart. Little things like that go a long ways and make big plays. Well, believe it or not, Alcorn State has led for 14 minutes in this first half, and that was a period of time where neither team had scored for almost six minutes, but since then, when Chris Austin came in just a few minutes ago, it's completely changed the Pilots on their end of the floor. Vucinic underneath, goes high off the glass, no good. Rebound, Linnell Henry. Like the idea, a little up and under move, but just didn't you know, come, come up with it strong, finish with it. Montgomery, former number one recruit in Mississippi. King with it now on the far wing, gives it up to Montgomery, puts up the triple. And that one falls for the Braves. Timeout called by Coach Leggins. And he's not happy with the defensive pressure on that last possession. No, there is a miscommun miscommunication right there. And you can't let somebody like that, who has the ability to shoot the basketball, get open like that. And it's a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here with 31.9 seconds left until halftime. A very different story than what we saw against Willamette when the Pilots, I believe they put up 55 in the first half. But we've mentioned it a few times. I mean, it's a different type of athletic ability here for Alcorn State, obviously a different division and level. But how would you say the Pilots have played in the first half? I think they have settled down here in the last five or six minutes, but really struggled against the pressure, took them out of what they were trying to do, and then just rushed their shots. And obviously didn't shoot the ball very well, but I, I like what I've seen in the last few minutes. I think they're getting in a better flow. They got 30, you know, basically the shot clock here to end the half, and you gotta be smart. You wanna use the clock so that you go into the half at least five points up. There'll be a 1.5 second differential between shot clock and game clock. Robertson with it, gives it up to Chris Austin. 15 on the shot clock. They can almost hold on to beat the clock. Double teamed, Meadows in trouble. Fights through the defense, gives it up to Wood. The triple, oh, in and out. Can't beat the buzzer and that will end the half. You would have liked to have seen that one gone in, but you're still working with that five point lead that you were talking about, Jen. And let's get your thoughts on the first half between these two teams. Well, both teams are still struggling to shoot the basketball. I think Portland's obviously on the upside of that, but. You know, you're lucky right there, not turning the ball over, got a decent shot. You know, you'd love to see that fall, but 
I would expect going into the half, both teams kind of talk about settling down and running some stuff in the half court. The Pilots working with a 23-18 lead into halftime. We'll be back in about 12 minutes to talk about the first half, look at some of the stats, and tip off for the second half on the WCC Network.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Just a minute before halftime is over. Brian Slyke and Jennifer Mountain with your call. You and I were looking at some of the first half stats. Uh, nothing pretty, to say the least. Both teams shooting 27% from the field, but it's the Pilots who really picked up tempo at the end of that first half. Yeah, the last six minutes, they kind of got it going offensively, and not percentage-wise, but just in rhythm. They had took better shots. I thought Chris Austin came in off the bench. You know, he was sitting out there for a little bit, but came in and really provided a spark by doing something a little bit different than shooting the three. They're only three for 13 from the three-point line, and. Um, you know, right now they're going to need, you know, need some people to contribute in some different ways other than shooting the three. Yeah, early on in this game, Alcorn State was using their athletic ability, their long arms to just cause havoc for the Pilots where they couldn't get in any type of rhythm. And uh, you have to give it to the Pilots. So despite having all that pressure, only five turnovers in the first half. And that's something that has been a problem the last couple of games for them. Yeah, and that was one of the points of emphasis is taking care of the basketball. They've done a good job with that, but... What's happened is, is that pressure has really transferred to the offensive end going a little bit too fast, maybe taking shots that they're not used to. Um, and just, again, contributes to that low percentage as a group. Out on the court for Alcorn State to start the second half, it's Byron Joshua, DJ Bruton, Keandre Montgomery, DJ McCorder, and Darius Agnew for the Pilots. Meadows, Robertson, Wood, Vucinich, and Chris Austin, Vucinich fighting for position in the paint. Moving around the outside. Robertson beating his man, kicks it out, foul call. Great opening set. I mean, a lot of movement, on ball screens, side top, side movement. Good execution and, you know, obviously got the foul call. Agnew. Picks up his first personal, the first one on the Braves in the second half. Inbound pass to Robertson. Second time they've gotten it down low, but unable to convert. Yeah, he's going to want that one back again. Same thing in the first half. But great execution uh, on the baseline out of bounds. Joshua, the freshman from New Orleans. The quarter with it. Gives it up to Darius Agnew, going up against Vucinich. No good, Moses Wood went up for it, saves it before it heads out of bounds. Good hustle. You know, we got stuck down low behind somebody, and that's going to be a problem if they can't get around. Can't allow somebody with that athletic ability with two feet in the paint like that. Vucinich has it near the baseline, going up against Agnew. Swings it out to Chris Austin. Step back, his foot was on the line. Back iron, no good. Joshua against Meadows, too strong. And now they're in transition. Wood goes baseline, kicks it out to Austin, over to Meadows. The extra pass to Robertson on the near wing, no good. Foul called on Darius Agnew. That'll be his second, second personal and the second, second one on the, on the Braves. And I didn't see anything, uh, now it was off ball. Well, I'm not sure if they're calling the foul on him why they have the basketball. Alcorn State trailing by five. Neither team has scored yet in the second half. McCorder, no good. And Vucinich, the freshman, comes down with it. Vucinich's done a nice job on the boards. This is a great test for him. I mean, strength and athleticism that he's going against and uh, doing a nice job for the most part. Again, doing a great job on the boards. I can say that was something that you and I talked about with Vucinich. Is, as a younger player, how is he going to fare against some bigger bodies, especially when it comes to conference play. And you're right, tonight is a good test against Alcorn State. Wood, the three! Wood now has five points. And a tip from Mike Meadows. And it'll go out of bounds, stay with the Braves. Good hands by Meadows, just anticipating. Super quick. I was gonna say, he's got such a quick reaction time. Yep.
Braves trying to cut into the lead for the Pilots. McCorder beyond the free throw line, and that one falls. A little too much space on the shooter there. Lawson driving, going up against Montgomery, no call. Rebound, Linnell Henry. Well, I thought there was a lot of body contact right there, so did Coach Leggins. Rutten drives it all the way to the hoop and the finish. Braves back within four. And that, you're right, that was a tough take by Chris Austin. And well, there was body contact for sure. Bucinic off the mark going up against Henry. No pass into the corner to Montgomery. Robertson on defense. Long offensive rebound for the Braves. 15 on the shot clock. Screen set by Henry. Joshua gives it back to Linnell Henry in the paint. Five on the shot clock for DeAndre Montgomery. The long three over Robertson, air balls it out of bounds. And Robertson talking with the referee. Yeah, he wanted a little bit of a flop there. I don't disagree with it actually because he didn't touch him on the shot. Full court pressure put on by the Braves. And it's that 2-1-2 two, two that they saw in the first half. Chris Austin stepping into the three, short. Montgomery saves it before going out of bounds. Mike Meadows, again, the hands causing trouble for the Braves. And the foul called on number two, Byron Joshua. That'll be his third personal and the third one on the Braves this half. Good hands again by Meadows, just anticipating. You're right, he's just got that quick explosiveness. Get off the ground real quick. He's a fun player to watch. He does a lot of different things. Plays with a lot of emotion. Chica and Duca checks in. And the other thing is, it looks like he's just having fun out there, which is something that we haven't really seen the last couple of seasons out of the Pilots. I agree 100%. Austin going baseline, open oh, oh. under, what a move! Oh, that's the athleticism right there you're talking about. I mean, hang time in the air, great finish. Pilots back up by six. He's just fun to watch. The all-around player, the everything man right now for the Pilots, Linnell Henry. Tough take, and Duca was on defense, and I think he'll pick up the foul. And he will. That'll send us to the media. 15-31 left to go in the ball game. A six-point lead for the Pilots, 28-22. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. We welcome you back onto the bluff on the campus of the University of Portland. Brian Slyke and Jennifer Mountain with your call. But now Henry at the line to shoot two after the foul by Chica and Duca. Braves have not had a lead since it was 11 to 10. 
So Eric still trying to slowly get back into this one. First half, they shot 27%. Short on the free throw attempt from Henry. And both teams just really struggling to score the basketball. Jack Berry with it, gives it up to Chris Austin. Austin refusing the screen. And a foul called on number 10. That'll be Paul King. That's his first personal, the fourth one on the Braves this half. And the next foul by Alcorn State will be one and one for the Pilots. Twenty-eight, twenty-five. Pilots leading. Good ball movement from Portland. Robertson takes it inside the three-point line. Short offensive board. You know, and that's a shot that he normally makes. I think you know, being out, hasn't played in a couple games with an injury, maybe affecting him just a little bit. In and out. That's happened a couple of times for the Pilots tonight. And as tough as the offense has been for Portland, their defense has been pretty darn good. Well, he's, he's gone to the little bit smaller lineup again here, which allows them to switch in all spots. Tough take for King off the glass and in. Oh, okay. a little 2-1-2, three-quarter court. Just trying to make something happen. And again, the, the press really hasn't thrown Portland as far as turning the ball over, just has made them go a little bit fast. That was troublesome in the first half. Perry puts up the three, no good. 0 for 2 on the night. Robertson fighting hard, second chance points. Great offensive board. You know, that's one thing, when the shot's not falling for you as an offensive player, do something else, and that's exactly what he did. Got something and got going by the, by the offensive board. Pajud gives it up to Henry and a turnover. Ooh. Perry able to pick it up and get things going. There's just a lot of body contact in all spots. Cuts, on ball, off ball. Meadows the feed to Robertson and the bunny finish. And things are starting to open up for the Pilots offensively. Well, one thing that I like is they've stayed away from the three-point line for the most part, making some things happen. Ooh. And Duca not happy about that call. That'll be his second personal, the third one in the half for Portland. Well, I think one thing that Coach Likens was talking to the officials kind of at that break is the body contact on the shots down here. We're not getting the calls, and, you know, that's the exact same thing at this end. Referees telling the Portland bench to sit down. Moses Wood and Yaru Harvey set to check in. King making the first free throw. Well, the amount of energy on that bench, <laughs> it's gonna be a hard job for the officials because they're constantly up and down. Robertson and Meadows to the bench. Wood and Harvey out on the floor. King shot 80.7% at Bossier College. Thirteen minutes left to go in tonight's contest. And a low sc scoring affair between these two teams, 32 to 27. We got a defensive battle going here. A lot different than 122 points we saw two days ago. Hard take, Wood hits the dirt. Nice job by Moses of getting that shot off and giving it a chance. Took, took one on the chin kind of right there. And the fifth team fouled. Moses Wood at the line to shoot. So Moses Wood heads to the line. He'll have two. Go, Moses! Wood, a double transfer, went to Tulane, and then last season was at UNLV, an 83.9% free throw shooter. Well, he's just really versatile. I mean, he can score on, you know, from the perimeter, as we've seen, and and then can put it on the ground. He's got good size, long and lanky. 
I can say for his size, good strong ball skills. Yep. He makes the free throw, 34-27 now. Passing around the outside. 15 on the shot clock. Jack Perry locked in on King. The screen from Henry. Switch from Portland. Five on the shot clock. King picked up his dribble. Gives it up to Bruton. Baseline jumper, no good. And that'll be a shot clock violation. Never hit rim. That was just a great defensive possession right there from the pilots. I mean, everybody was locked in. And with this smaller lineup that we talked about, they're switching everything, which is causing a little bit of trouble for Alcorn State. Wood on the far wing. And off to Chris Austin. He might have a quick first step against Henry. Gives it up to Wood. And a foul off ball. Correction will be on King. His second personal in the sixth one on Alcorn State. And that'll send us to another media break. Seven point lead for the Pilots, 27 to 34. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. Thirty-four twenty-seven pilots lead inside the Child Center. Brian like Jennifer Mountain with your call. And looking at some of the stats at the break, Alcorn State's bench has been a bit more productive than the pilots. And you'd like to see the bench for the pilots get up in, the, in some of this action right now. But they've yeah. struggled only two points so far. Well, I mean, you look at this ball game. Both teams still struggling. They're thirty, less than thirty percent from the floor. You know, so there's not going to be a lot of production. He's got a lot more depth coming off his bench with some guys that can really make some difference. You know, they just haven't put it in the basket tonight, quite frankly. Alcorn State foul on number zero, Linnell Henry. Linnell Henry first picking up that foul. On the Braves. That'll be his first personal and the seventh one on the Braves. So when Duke gets to the line, he went eight for eight against Willamette on Thursday. And as a true freshman, Coach Leggins has a lot of trust in that young man to be exactly where he's supposed to be at all times on the court. And it's not often you're seeing a, a true freshman playing almost 25 minutes a game. Well, he's been really productive in practice. You know, he's got good size as far as strength. I mean, not super tall, but just strong. Knack for the ball, rebounds really hard. And he's that, that guy that does the intangibles that you don't see in a stat sheet. And those, goes, those guys go a long way. Eight-point lead for the Pilots. Good Montgomery, defense. the spin move called for the travel. And that was caused by Nduke coming over with the help. 
those are the things right there that we're talking about, the intangible things. That, that's team defense. That's great anticipation. Called for the travel. Perry setting up the offense. And Keandre Montgomery looked a bit frustrated after that travel call. Now the foul call on Linnell Henry. That'll be his second personal. Second personal. And right now, Alcorn State in some serious trouble if they continue to foul here. It'll be one and one for Portland, but a couple more. It'll be a double bonus. For sure. I mean, there's 11 and almost 11 and a half minutes left in this half. You certainly don't want to be in the double bonus the rest of the way. But again, this game has been very physical. You know, on the ball, off the ball. They're competing, both teams competing really hard, playing hard. Moses Wood making the first free throw, 83.9% free throw shooter. As Mike Meadows checks in, Chris Austin will head to the bench. And getting some much deserved love from his bench. Wood will go two for two from the charity strike. And he's somebody who's definitely taken a big step forward in his production from when he was at UNLV. He was averaging 6.1 points per game and he's gotten double digit figures in a couple of games already for the Pilots. Yeah, he's getting a lot of confidence. I think he fits the system really well. You know, one thing Portland's doing a great job is capitalizing at the, at the free throw line. They're shooting 82%. And if you're going to be in the bonus for the rest of the half, that's a good thing to have. Jack Perry picked up his first personal. And that'll be the third one on the Pilots. Whole bench is up right now for Portland and a travel call. Coach Leggins fired up. And you love to see that energy from your coach. He's not even playing in this one. Yeah, I think one of the games we're going to put a pedometer on him. <laughs> See how many Nike steps he's got. You better be careful. You better not get him any shoes. He might get out there on the court himself. That's how much he's interested and involved on the sideline. Chica and Duca will pick up the foul. It's in Duca's third personal foul, fourth one on the Pilots. He just moved a little too quick on that screen, and sometimes the guard's got to wait a little bit longer to let him get there, but uh, plays with a lot of energy. No points for Alcorn State in almost two and a half minutes. They've got three turnovers in that span. 15 on the shot clock. Byron Joshua, kiss off the glass is good. Byron Joshua. That was a good take. I mean, actually good defense by Meadows. Just made a good play. Tough shot. Yaru Harvey with it. The true freshman gives it up to Tyler Robertson in the paint. And that's good vision from Harvey. Good execution. And that's what they're, they, you know, Robinson wasn't shooting the ball very well from the outside, but last three attempts right inside the key area. Robertson now has nine points. McCorder. And that'll be an empty possession for Alcorn State. And Meadows right now looking at his hand. He might have jammed a thumb or something right there. She keeps focusing in on that hand. He'll head to the corner. Pilots are three of their last three from the floor. Perry with it now. And a charge called on Tyler Robertson. That'll be his third personal. Well, you certainly don't want two offensive fouls. You know, last two trips down the floor, two out of the three trips down the floor. That's basically like a turnover. Under 10 to go, 10 point lead for Portland. Alcorn State looking for their first win. Pilots looking to have an above 500 record on the season. And that's where we were talking about Robertson being able to defend inside. Oh, almost converted on the offensive end. Oh, and out of bounds. 
mistake by DJ McCorder on the rebound. And dribbled it off the end line. Perry will check it in. Ooh. He had Robertson on the block momentarily. He sure did. Meadows a step back, almost got Montgomery to fall into him. Seven on the shot clock, Robertson in the paint, touch again, inside. He's now got double digit points with 11. Well, I like what they've done with him inside. You know, again, with this lineup. And they're gonna call that foul on Jack Perry. He was run into by number two, Byron Joshua, but Perry will pick up the foul. That's his second and the sixth one on the Pilots. Uh, he can't believe that he got called for that foul. And you have to sort of side with him because Joshua ran right into him. And yeah. Vucinic checking in for Portland. Darius Agnew backing down. Vucinic called for a travel. And Robertson, the first man there to congratulate Vucinic, standing his ground. I'll tell you, they've done a nice job of defending in the post because they, these guys got some athleticism that can really get off the ground and just a great job of being strong and not giving up your spot. Robertson gives it up to Meadows. It's going up against DK Thorne. Now it's Wood with it. Robertson didn't get a clean handle on it on the pass. Dribbles in the paint. Short shot, circles and down the drain. I don't think he expected to not have anybody near him. Kind of a little one-handed runner there. Nice job of kind of breaking this game open. Nice lead for Portland now. They're up by 14, back down to 12. Joshua. Joshua making that last basket. Yeah, that was a nice follow. Again, full court pressure put on the, by the Braves. Now, one thing that Portland needs to make sure they do is not go too quick. Vucinic tried to tap it back in. Ball still loose. Defensive board. Thorns long. Rebound Vucinic. And I see you, Jen. Tell him to slow it down. Good tempo. Good tempo right here. Vucinic gives it up to Robertson. He's feeling the hot hand. Let it go, he's got 15. Now the leading scorer in tonight's game. And you have to imagine if the outcome could have been different at Arizona State had Robertson been able to play, because right now he's shooting the lights out the last few times down the court. Well, he in the last six minutes here really has taken over the ball game offensively a couple different ways. I mean, he can shoot the three and they have to respect him. It hasn't dropped a lot for him, but he's made the adjustment and gone inside and they have not had the answer to Robertson so far. Robertson's got 15. He's put the pilots up by 14, 45, 31. We'll be right back on the WCC Network.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. 14 point lead for the Pilots with 6.51 left to go in the game. And Jen, you and I were talking at the break and yes, Robertson's put in 15, but the shooting percentage as uh, a whole for the Pilots has gone up since halftime. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's up to 33%. Again, not shooting the ball very well from the three-point line, but they've adjusted and done some other things. And I mean, he came in right there and made some great plays and kind of got broke this thing open a little bit. Foul called before the shot. So Joshua will be shooting two. Foul called on Moses Wood. It'll be his third personal. And the seventh on the Pilots. Forward number one, Moses Wood, his third personal, 17th foul on the Violets. Alcorn State's into the bonus for the rest of the game. And Alcorn State now yeah. in the bonus timeout. for the rest of the game. Timeout called on the floor. We just sent it away for immediate. And we'll send it away for another media break. 45, 31, 639 left to go in tonight's contest between the Pilots and the Braves on the WCC Network. Welcome back inside the Child Center, 45 to 31. Byron Joshua at the free throw line after the foul by Moses Wood before the break. Both teams in the bonus now for the rest of the half. Orwin seven fouls, Alcorn State with eight. That one rattles around and then falls. And both teams shooting relatively well for the free throw line. Portland at almost 82%, Alcorn State at 86%. Missing that time, Montgomery getting the offensive rebound though and an extra possession for the Braves. Well, little mistake there by not putting a body on. You hate give up an offensive board off of a free throw. You can't just jump with them, you gotta put a body on them. And that foul will be on Chris Austin. It's his first personal, the eighth on the pilot. So again, one and one for Byron Joshua. Well, you know, there's a lot of time left in this ball game still, and you certainly don't want to put Alcorn State at the free throw line. So you got to start playing with your feet, getting your hands off, because right now the officials are trying to clean it up a little bit, and they're calling everything with the body. Joshua, the freshman from New Orleans, Louisiana, went to Crescent City High School. So far in tonight's contest, nine points, three rebounds and an assist. And now he's in double figures with 10 points. Wood with it on the near wing. Bucinich left alone in the paint. Now back on the low block. Pilots moved around the outside. And a charge called on Portland. Bucinich will pick up that foul. That'll be his second personal and the ninth one on the Pilots. And Bucinich just a little bit too strong inside trying to establish position. Again, both teams have got to start moving with their feet. Keep their hands off and, you know, I mean, right now the officials, again, are calling every little thing. Meadows gets screened and Robertson the block. 
And Byron Joshua tried to gather himself with the ball. It went off his hand and out of bounds. So it'll be pilot basketball. And again, Robertson coming in right off, right off the bat, making a big defensive play. Just He's just headsy, a smart basketball player. Yeah, he just came in for Vucinic after the foul. Little three on two right here. Former Big Sky sixth man of the year. Gives it up to Wood, no good. It's Montgomery, climbs the ladder for that rebound. I mean, not a bad look. I mean, that's a shot he can get. They had the advantage in the transition. An 11 point lead right now for the Pilots. Just over five and a half to go in tonight's contest. Bruton steps back for the three. Offensive rebound, Henry. At this point in the game, you hate to give up second chance opportunities to the Braves. Skip pass over near the corner. Tough take, no good. Oh, and the putback by Mike Pajud. Nice offensive follow and nice little touch right there in the putback. Portland needs a great offensive possession right here. Great shot attempt. Back down to a single digit lead. Nine points for Portland. Robertson fighting for position and Keandre Montgomery is gonna get called for the foul. Well, I'll tell you, every time he's gone down low, something good has happened. I'm sure Coach Likens talked to him about that on the bench when he had a you know, short little sit down. And looks like we're gonna have another timeout. 30 seconds, It'll be a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here with a nine point lead. Montgomery picking up his first personal foul in the ninth one on the Braves. And right now Montgomery getting an explanation from the referee and things are getting a bit chippy it seems like down in the paint between these two teams. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, you frustration a little bit. I mean, both teams, again, I think they're a little bit uh, kind of shocked by some of the fouls that are being called with touches. But right now, I think the officials, because it's been very physical, and like I said, off the ball a lot. Um, just trying to get, clean it up a little bit. Portland, no points in the last two minutes and seven seconds. So head to the free throw line right now, though. Robertson at the line. Robertson making the first free throw. Robertson last year, 82.3% from the free throw line. Well, now it's defensive stops, smart defensive stops, team defense like they've been playing. They've got to end it with a block out and rebound. Joshua taking it to the outside. Going up against Meadows, drives it in the paint, splits the defenders off the glass and good. Well, and Joshua right now is the guy that's hurting him. They've got to keep him out of the paint. He's been able to get to the rim multiple times in the last few minutes. Joshua's got 12 points, leading all Brave scorers. Nice. The no look gave to Robertson. Nice penetration and dish. Weak side help was late. And that's what the pilots need. Robertson with a game high 19 points right now. Going up against Bruton. And most of them in this second half. Montgomery lost it on the shot. And Joshua again, a deep three. He's becoming a pest for Portland. Yeah, he's really done a nice job. Chris Austin with the take, he gets fouled. And that one will be on Byron Joshua. His fourth personal foul, the tenth one on the Braves. That'll be a two-shot bonus, but that'll send us to another media break. An eight-point lead right now for the Pilots. They lead 49-41, just under four to go inside the Child Center on the WCC Network.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. 334 left to go in this contest between Alcorn State and Portland. The Pilots are leading 49-41. Brian Slyke and Jennifer Mountain with your call. And in the second half, it's been all Tyler Robertson. Chris Austin added the spark in that first half, but now it's Robertson. 16 of his 19 points have come in this second half. Yeah, he's done an absolute great job of scoring in the paint. Leading these guys, you know, making the little play down at the other end with the charge. Just the little things. He's just, a, you know, again, high IQ guy and a real big competitor. Now, Byron Joshua's got four fouls. He's still out on the court. If you're the pilot, would you try to go after him offensively? Absolutely. You go right at him because right now he's the one that's hurting you offensively. And, you know, he's got to play a little bit smart if he wants to stay in the ball game. And coach needs him in the ball game right now. King to Henry. No foul called. Bodies are hitting the floor. King missing that three. And a foul called on 15, DJ Bruton. He shoved Jack Perry in the back while going for the rebound. And Perry will now head down to shoot two as the Pilots are in double bonus. He about got his head taken off right there. And again, he's, he's, a, he's a tough one as well. Big time competitor. And Smart, smart Jack basketball Perry player. Great job of just maintaining position down low on that off, outside uh, rebound. Perry looking for his first points in the contest. 0 for 3 from behind the arc, makes the free throw, and now in the scoring column. You know, the thing about Perry that, you know, yeah, he didn't score the ball that well tonight, but that's not really his role. His role is running the show. He knows the system so well and just being that extension of the coach on the floor. We go two for two, points over to the bench. And a 12 point lead for the Pilots. You know, Elkhorn State got this within eight and then Portland's really done a nice job of responding. Joshua with it, going up against Robertson. Got the crossover, Robertson standing his ground and it'll be an and one. Good by Byron Joshua. Joshua Portland, Joshua makes it count. He's now got 15 points. Correction, 17 points for Joshua. Well, I mean, he, he was walled up. I'm not sure if he had his hands down in the beginning, but from the, you know, from the time he went up for the shot, he was walled up. Maybe he got him with a hip or something. Robertson now has four personal fouls. So he'll have to be careful in the final three minutes. Get a lot, you know, there's a lot of time left. Free possession game here. And Coach Leggins, not liking what he was seeing on the inbound, calls timeout. Oh no. And they're calling a five second violation. Is that what I'm hearing? The ball never went in, so I'm not sure. And now the referee's talking about it near half court. Leggins thinks he got the timeout called. And now they are going to grant it to him. Moment of relief, breathe a little bit. Yeah. I mean, good timeout right there. You certainly don't need a turnover at this point in the ball game, especially with it being a three possession game. Got to, go, got to do a good job against their pressure of getting the ball in. 53-44. So. It's a nine point lead for the Pilots. And you mentioned it just a few seconds ago. It's only a three possession game. And with three minutes left to go, there's a ton of time for things to change in this ball game. What do the Pilots need to do to keep this momentum? Got to handle the full court pressure, number one. And then in the half court, you know, you don't want a quick shot unless it's a great shot, okay? And you really got to run your stuff, execute, and get a decent look at the rim. Don't go too quick. Because, you know, right now they're in a deficit. They've got to go a little bit faster than they have with three minutes to go but just certainly got to take care of the basketball. So Moses Wood will Welcome inbound the ball. The and they're in a man-to-man -man full court. Good job, Robinson, coming back. And he came from mid-court. Pilots push it up, beat the press, over to Chris Austin. Good decision, really good decision. 
I was going to say, didn't chuck up a three, even though he was open, slowed it down, and now working the offense and the clock. Great job of going against that press. That sideline, a lot of times, is where you got to get the relief. DK Thorne got his hand in the way, causing the transition, and a huge block by Chris Austin, denying the Braves out of bounds. It'll be Alcorn State basketball. But wow, Chris Austin skied for that block. He sure did. We got bodies all over the place. And just again, competing. Great anticipation, great block. You know, he's the one that turned the ball over down here and came back and made a huge defensive play. And that's not compounding negatives right there. You like to see that out of your veteran players. Absolutely. Joshua, a miss. Offensive rebound, Bruton. And he converts on the putback. Poked away, another turnover. This is not what the Pilots wanted. Bruton back inside, underneath and in. And a quick four point swing. And now it's a five point ball game. A timeout call by Portland. And this will be a 30 second timeout. So we'll stick around here. And with 2.07 left to go, you just talked about handling the pressure of that press and the Pilots got duped into a turnover. Yeah, it's it's not going too fast. They need to go back to what they did, the previous possession, get the ball in, clear it out, get the ball down the side with the pass, and not try to dribble through penetration with too many people, and then get a great shot in the half court. Alcorn State on a 7-0 run in the last 58 seconds. Well, this is where you learn a lot about your squad right here. You gotta finish ball games and you know, he's got some high IQ guys out there. Chris Austin needs to really look to take over and look to score a little bit. It's Coach Jeremy Pope giving Chris Austin a couple words of encouragement out of the timeout. DK Thorne. Ty Pajo in the lineup for Alcorn State. Pajud into the lineup and he picks up the foul on the inbound. And so Mike Meadows. No worries on his face as he heads to the line for two. Well, and this is where free throws become huge. Make a big difference in the game. He shot nearly 90% from the free throw line at Eastern Washington, and it'll be the double bonus situation. So two free throws for Mike Meadows. And he's walking a little gingerly. I think he might've got Mike caught one in the thigh. Two. Go, Mike. Let's see if he can fight through it on the free throws. Easy enough on the first one. Chica and Duca checking in. Jack Perry to the bench. And I love this substitution right here. You got an energy guy, super physical, rebounds the heck out of the basketball, and you need that right now. That physical presence in the paint. And Meadows rattles around the second free throw, and it goes. And it's all about getting stops down here. You have gotta have stops defensively. Make them work for it. Two minutes to go in the game. And Duca on Byron Joshua. And a foul called on the floor. And Duca will pick it up. That'll be his fourth personal foul. Well, and once again, it's Joshua making it happen. They've, he's really hurt the pilots in this second half. He's got 18 points. Fifteen of them have come in the second half now. Make it sixteen in the second half. Pajud, excuse me, Pajud and DK Thorne checking in. Six point lead for Portland. And Jack Perry already back at the scores table. And Coach Leggins going a little offense defense here. Smart. And now Alcorn State took off their biggest scoring threat here in the second half. He's now on the bench with 1.55 to go in the game. The Superman pass to Robertson. Jumps up to grab it. Triple teamed. And turnover. Just what the Braves needed. Bruton driving all the way, left hand finish. Well, we talked about this pressure. 
and they really hadn't had trouble with it till this last three minutes. 90 seconds to go, a three point lead. Pilots need to get across the timeline, they do. And Austin has it with 17 on the shot clock. Skip pass, Tyler Robertson, the three, no good. And a foul called on Linnell Henry. He can't believe it, that's his third personal. Well, great look by Robinson, just didn't fall, but great job by getting to the offensive glass. By Moses Wood, now he'll be at the free throw line. Great job by Wood of getting himself to the rim or getting himself to the offensive board. That extra effort, I mean, that can make all the difference right now. I mean, this could be the difference in the ball game right here. Moses Wood sinks the free throw. And the Pilots shooting outstanding from the free throw line, 18 of 20, 90% on the night. Chris Austin to the bench. And Byron Joshua back on the court after a quick breather. And Wood, Coleman collected at the free throw line, hits both as King lets the ball roll, so no clock or no time comes off the clock. Coleman Lemke up on the bench trying to keep that energy going for the Pilots. King falling to the ground, foul called. And that'll be on Jack Perry. Well, and right now, Portland's just really struggling to keep Alcorn State's guards in front. They're getting themselves to the rim and to the free throw line almost every attempt down the floor. So 110 left to go. Alcorn State was huddling as if it was a timeout. Yeah, I'm not sure what they were doing there. King shot 80.7% at Bossier Parish Community College. Thorne checking in. Montgomery to the bench. And two for two from the strike. And Pajou checking in for Alcorn State. Switching some offense for defense. Well, again, one possession game. Pilots in trouble near the baseline, and now they get the passing across half court. And the pressure right now by Alcorn State is suffocating at times. Well, good job of advancing the ball with the pass down the side. A three point lead, seven on the shot clock. Gives it up to Robertson. The extra pass to Moses Wood in the corner. Oh, he hits it! The fans are loving it, they're on their feet. Great extra pass and Woods come up huge here in the last minute. No call and Moses Wood tried to go for it, touches it as he was falling out of bounds so it'll stay with Alcorn State. 18 on the shot clock, 29.5 on the game clock. Do they need to go for a three right now? No, not necessarily. They need the quickest shot they can get because there's still 30 seconds. They're going to end up fouling regardless. Bruton almost trapped in the corner. Linnell Henry somehow got the shot up. Got the offensive rebound. No good again. Offensive board, Bruton. He converts. 19.1 to go. Four-point lead for Portland. And this will be a full timeout called by Alcorn State, so we'll send it to break. 60 to 56, four point lead for the Pilots on the WCC Network.
Well, we've got an exciting one inside the Child Center. 19.1 seconds left in the contest. The Pilots holding on to a four-point lead over Alcorn State. And the inbound by Yaru Harvey for Portland. Well, that's the biggest thing is getting the ball inbounds. Great hands by Harvey. Gives it up to Nduka and smart play. Brings it out. Use that clock for the Pilots. And now Alcorn State comes out to foul. Good job of just maintaining composure right there. Jack Perry at the line, two for two. From the free throw line, only two points on the night. Go along with three rebounds. And Coach Bussey right now drawing up a play for his players at the scores table. Yeah. And you have to wonder if they're going to be focusing in on Byron Joshua, because again, he's been the most effective in the second half. Well, they're get, they got to go as quick as they possibly can. Two possession game. Biggest thing for Portland is to keep the ball in front and not foul. Six point lead, 10.3 to go. Bruton picks it up. Wood cuts him off. The three, down and out, and Linnell Henry can't come up with the offensive rebound. Tough break for him. He's had a, a long night. Only one point, but he's got 12 rebounds. And Pajud will check in along with Thorne. King will head to the bench. Along with Montgomery, so 4.4 left to go. 62-56. Tough place to get the ball in. Yeah, in the corner. They get it to Chris Austin, turned it over immediately. Pajud went up, he hit the ground hard. But he's quickly back up, 2.5 on the clock. Well, that's the last place you want to throw the ball inbounds. Is, you know, right underneath your basket for that exact reason. Little turnover, and then they're at the free throw line. And I'm sure Coach Leggins going to talk to him about that real quick. And, but you mentioned it before, that that's a tough spot. Tough you can't spot. move on the sideline, and you're in the corner. Yeah, you're almost better, though, throwing the ball other end of the court, you know, with a short, short clock. I mean, you just don't want to throw it underneath the basket like that. Again, Alcorn State trying to get their first win. This is game three of a 16-game road trip to start the season. Yeah, that's a lot of games on the road. And it will stay with the Pilots. And the clock didn't move on the inbound. And a lot going on here in the final three minutes. At one point, the Pilots had a 12-point lead with about 3.05 to go. Then Alcorn State just turned up the pressure, forcing a bunch of turnovers and converting them and getting that lead all the way down to three at one point. And the Pilots have been fortunate enough to keep it at bay at, at that moment. Now it's only a four point lead with 2.5 seconds left. They've done just enough to kind of keep this lead. Great job, you know, by Wood. Free throws and then a big three to kind of open it up. And, you know, now right now Alcorn State's playing catch up, but yeah, the pressure really, really pumped themselves up a little bit here in the last three and a half minutes and got Alcorn State back in the game with turnovers. You mentioned Moses Wood. He's got 14 points now, six for six from the free throw line, four rebounds and an assist to his name. But those two free throws and then that big three in the corner kind of finish, finished Alcorn State off. I was gonna say, it gave you a, a bit of a sigh of relief after Wood hit that three. But overall, as a team, the pilot shooting 21.7% from three on the night. You have to think the coach Leggins gonna want that to be improved upon by the games, uh, by the games next week, excuse me. It's been a struggle for him. I mean, even against Willamette, they weren't shooting the three that well. And he's talked about the fact that they can shoot it, so it's it's not something that they're not capable of doing. You know, tonight I think the pressure made him go a little bit quick. And there's that high pass you were talking about to Robertson, and that will be it. 
Game over, Pilots win a close one, 62 to 58 over Alcorn State. And Jen, your, your final thoughts on today's contest. You know, they competed really hard and found a way to win because they weren't scoring the ball very well. Came down to defensive issue, making things happen. I thought they did a good job of rebounding the basketball for the most part. Um, but just a great team effort. And again, a lot of people stepped up when they needed big plays and made them. Robertson finished with a team high, 19 points, 16 of those coming in the second half, a huge part of the victory for the Pilots. I'm Brian Slyke, that was Jennifer Mountain on your call. Don't go anywhere, in about 30 minutes we got a women's basketball game tipping off between Weber State and the Portland Pilots on the WCC Network. Thanks for joining in on this broadcast, we'll see you in about 30 minutes.